welcome back to the next chapter, Sherry here. Today I'm gonna to talk about something that is usually not talked about, or at least I haven't heard many people talk about it. It's kind of one of those taboo things that, oh, Valentine's Day is for couples. Well, guess what? Valentine's Day is for all of us. It's the day of celebration of love, and we should love ourselves enough to celebrate ourselves. So I have come up with several ways that you can celebrate you on Valentine's Day. Whether you are in a relationship, you are by yourself, um, no matter the circumstance, you can celebrate you. Some of these ways involve spending money. Others do not cost anything at all. So let's start with ways that you can celebrate you, but it will involve spending money. First thing is, if you like flowers, send yourself some flowers or go pick out flowers. Pick out those beautiful colors that you love, your favorite flower, and take them home or take them to your office where they are a constant reminder of you, how beautiful you are and how much you deserve to be celebrated. And if you want a long-term solution, because we, as we know, flowers do not last a long time, buy yourself a house plant. I love my house plants. They're, um, they're a hobby of mine. You will see later on in my videos. It's a way to remind me that I have something other than myself to take care of. I, I love to watch them grow. And by buying house plants, this is something that you can take care of and will be a much longer reminder of how special you truly are. Number two, get yourself an art piece. And this can involve your favorite type of art. Mine, for example, would be paintings or portraits, uh, photographs, I love photographs. And I love to buy things that remind me of a special time in my life, um, special places I've visited, people I've seen. So um, I would, if it were me, I would choose a place that I have been to that has really good memories. I also like, like vibrant, beautiful colors, so that would be important for me as well. So buying a piece of art is another way that you can celebrate you. Number three, treat yourself to a spa session. This is a really over the top way to celebrate you and to make yourself feel great. Whether you've been to a spa or not, it is a fabulous experience. You could just go for a facial or a massage, or you could have the royal treatment. That would be up to you. So pick your favorite spa and sign up, make an appointment and go enjoy the experience. Number four, take yourself on a dinner date. I will say I have been single now for almost two years, so I am a pro at eating alone. Even when I go into the nicest restaurant or just a casual sit-down restaurant, almost always I'm asked, will someone be joining you? And my answer always is, no, I'm alone. I'm by myself and I'm perfectly fine with that. I have become very comfortable with eating alone. And one thing I plan to do for Valentine's Day this year is to get myself all dressed up, look my best, and go out to one of my favorite places and have a wonderful dinner. So that's on my bucket list to do for Valentine's Day this year. And it's something you should consider too. Number five, buy yourself some jewelry. Jewelry is something that a lot of people buy on Valentine's Day, it's a very common thing. So who says you can't buy yourself some jewelry? Maybe it's a, a really pretty bracelet, necklace, earrings or even a ring. And it doesn't have to be expensive jewelry. There's beautiful costume jewelry that if you take care of it, will last for a very long time. So treat yourself to a piece of jewelry if you so desire. Now I'm gonna get into ways that you can celebrate Valentine's Day and you without spending money. First thing is go on a beautiful walk. Nothing feels better than to get out in the sunshine and the fresh air and take a walk. It's very exhilarating and it's a great way to make yourself feel wonderful and to celebrate yourself. Number seven, 
write yourself a letter describing what you like about yourself. Now, I will say that most of us are really good about pointing out our flaws. We're, we don't like this, or we don't like that, or we could be better at this. So I challenge you to write yourself a letter and tell yourself what it is you really like about yourself. It can be physical characteristics, it can be personality characteristics, it could be an accomplishment that you have in your professional life. But list things that you like about yourself, date the letter, put it in a special place, and get that letter out occasionally. When you're having a really bad day, get the letter out, read it, and remind yourself why you deserve to be celebrated. Number eight, take a day to do your favorite things. So one of my favorite things to do is travel. Now, because of my budget constraints, I cannot do a lot of traveling. However, I live in the beautiful state of Kentucky and there are tons of things that I can do within an hour of where I live that is an, a very enjoyable day. Lots of hiking trails, lots of, in the summer, there's lakes and there's, um, crafts fairs and things like that. So there's many things that you can do. You do not have to spend money to do it. Um, also, I love to shop and shopping does not always involve buying things. You can go just to browse. Um, uh, I know a lot of people do thrift shopping and they love it. They don't necessarily buy something all the time. But if you're on a, if you're on a tight budget, thrifting is the way to go because you can actually find some beautiful pieces at a very low cost. Number nine, start journaling. Now journaling is something that I put off for a very long time because I felt like that's not gonna help me. I, I don't feel the need to do that. But I will tell you since my divorce, I have started journaling and it has been a very self-awareness activity. I have realized sometimes when I feel like I haven't grown very much, I look back on my thoughts and feelings from a year ago even, and I realize, wow, I've made some great strides. So journaling is a way to bring those feelings, thoughts, emotions out on paper so you can see what you're feeling, you can help to understand it, and you can also gauge how you've grown from a previous time. And you can go to um, a department store such as Walmart and get a, just a, a cheap little notebook and journal in that. You do not have to have a big fancy leather journal to do this. You can write it on anything. Number 10, make a vision board. Now I plan to do a video on making a vision board in the near future. But what I mean by a vision board, a vision board is a visual thing, whether it's electronic or an actual board, that you have your goals and aspirations. It's a way for you to believe and remind yourself that this is your goal for, it could be the next year, the next five years, um, you set the timeline. That's the beauty of a vision board. It is your board and you decide what to do with it. So I challenge you to start a vision board and what better day to start a vision board than on Valentine's Day. And it can be something if you don't want to spend money, you can make it, um, it on your computer. And there's various ways we can do that. And when I make the video, I'll talk about the two different ways that you can make vision boards. Number 11, start a health journey. Um, I have been in the process of a health journey for some time. Um, I'm at the age that some of my not so wise health choices have caught up with me. So um, it is very important that I have really honed in on the need to do more activity, the need to be physically healthier and mentally healthier. So that has involved such things as stress reduction, exercise, eating healthier, uh, socializing, all of those things are very important. And I will say one of the healthiest choices I have made is that I surround myself with people and pets that I thoroughly enjoy. My animals are the most therapeutic thing I have next to my family. 
And I have, I have reached a point in life that I am only with folks who are positive, who make me feel good about who I am and what I am, who are not judgmental and who love unconditionally. So you need to be sure that you surround yourself with positivity and support. Number 12, take a hot bath or shower. Uh, it does wonders for yourself to just soak in a nice hot tub. And you know, you can even, you can light candles, you can put bath bombs in the water, bubbles, take a hot shower, um, put your favorite scent in there, such as lavender, and just really enjoy the experience. Play music while you're enjoying your, your bath or your shower and just take time to think about and relax and celebrate you during that time. Number 13, pray or meditate. So those of you who are spiritual and you can pray, pray is a great way to become at peace with yourself and your God. Uh, Others choose to meditate. It's very important that we reduce our stress levels and what better thing can you do for yourself than to pray or meditate? So this, I would encourage you to start on Valentine's Day and make it a part of your everyday routine. It's very important to do that. Number 14, spend time with your favorite person. Now that could be a friend, it could be a family member, a significant other, or it could be your pets. So spending time with that favorite person does wonders for your mood, for your confidence. So find that favorite person or pet and take time with them on Valentine's Day and as often as you possibly can. Number 15, do something for someone in need. This is a huge thing that we tend to forget. Um, it's been my experience and from what others have said, when you do something for someone who is less fortunate than you, it is a huge endorphin release. It makes you feel good about yourself. It, to do something for someone other than yourself gives you purpose. It makes you feel like you have made a difference and all of us want that. And if, you, if it's not a person that you do something for, you can choose animals. There's different things that you can do, but find a person, a pet, um, an environmental concern and do something for someone other than yourself. It's a great way to celebrate you because you're helping someone or something that needs help. Number 16, make yourself a Valentine. Now, I, I think this sounds a little bit corny, a little bit cheesy, but I love making homemade Valentines. I've done that since I was a kid, and I still like to do it. I occasionally give my sons Valentines, and they look at me like, oh, really, Mom? Come on. But make yourself a Valentine. Go to the Dollar Tree and get some cheap little um doilies and cutouts and that sort of thing, make yourself a valentine and maybe put it with that vase of flowers that you've bought for yourself. And just think of it, every time you look at it, you think, yeah, that's, that's for me, I deserve it. And last but not least, cook yourself your favorite food. Or if you're not a cook or a baker, go get your favorite food. I personally love to cook. I like to bake actually better than cook. So I could see that I would probably bake my favorite dessert for Valentine's Day. Um, so think of, you know how we as, especially as women, we tend to want to cook our spouse or our partner or our children their favorite meal on a special day. Who says we can't do it for ourselves? So cook yourself your favorite, cook or bake yourself your favorite food. So I hope this has given you some ideas of how to celebrate you on Valentine's Day. I hope that you, in 2024, choose to take care of you and to love yourself. And what better day to start it than on Valentine's Day. Until next time, I will see you soon. Take care, bye-bye.